Hello everyone, you're listening to the Eiffel Tower Podcast. My name's Oliver G and this is a show all about Paris and France. I hesitated there when I said my own name, didn't I? But uh, maybe that's because I don't have a guest in the studio today. It's just me. Uh, I'm nervous. I don't know what's going on. Well, who knows? Let's see what happens here. But uh, what I've got today for you is an episode all about rooftop terraces of Paris. This is something that I've been this is something I've been working on for four years, if you think about it. I'm going to walk you through the way to spend a whole day on the rooftops of Paris uh, with some of my favorite tips. But before we get started, this episode is brought to you by French Today. French Today audiobooks. It's uh, Camille, your regular guest on the show. You listen to her audiobooks, you repeat everything as you go, and boom, you'll be speaking French. But the tip before, uh, before I get back to it at the end of the episode, the tip is go on frenchtoday.com slash earful8. Eight for August, and you'll get a further 10% discount off everything. More about them at the end of the episode. Let's talk about rooftop terraces of Paris. My name's Oliver G. This is the Eiffel Tower. Let's get into it. Okay, so what I figured I'd do, just me here in the studio today, is I'd walk you through how to spend a day on the rooftop terraces of Paris. And this is uh, encompassing everything, where to get a coffee, where to get a dinner, where to get a view, where to get a little bit of cultural history. And the idea is I'm going to sort of walk you through it and give some reflections on it more than just, you know, sort of the half sentence you see in any similar uh, guides on the internet. But what I wanted to say is uh, before you get your pencil out and start writing down in the car, don't do it. Keep your eyes on the road. I'll put everything on the EiffelTower.com with all the addresses and the information so that if you come to Paris, you'll be able to visit these places too. Now, uh, I want to specifically walk you through this day as in uh, you wake up in the morning and you're going to visit five to six different rooftop terraces. This is the way that I'd recommend you do it. And I'm going to splice it up to keep it interesting with some emails from you guys at home, or as I like to call it, Gmail. Uh, so let's get started. The first rooftop terrace that I recommend everybody visits is in Montmartre. Now, this is also a good one to end on, but there's a reason that I've chose it for the beginning. It's because it's a, it's a secret. I don't know how this is a secret. This is a, there's a rooftop terrace called the Terrasse, T-E-R-R-A-S-S. Don't know why I spelt it. It's all going to be on the site. Terrace Hotel. You go to the top of it, and unless you're there on a Friday or a Saturday night when it's kind of uh, it's kind of bopping up there, you will almost certainly find it empty all the time. So you walk in like you own the place, go to the very top, get out to the rooftop terrace. And I don't mean the restaurant where the hotel guests are sitting. I mean the terrace, the open air terrace, and you have this like 180 degree view over all of Paris. And I think I mentioned on the show before because it looks, it reminds me of uh, those pictures you see in Manhattan looking over Central Park where there's all the trees right in front of you and then all the buildings beyond. It's kind of like that because it's overlooking the Montmartre Cemetery, the beautiful Montmartre Cemetery, which is very leafy green and it's right at your feet. So what you want to do, get up in the morning, head to this place, go up there for coffee. They might not serve you food uh, because that's for the hotel guest, but that place will be empty. In fact, so empty that uh, a few months ago, I had Cara Black, the author in town, and she was the book club topic. Uh, one of her, Murder in the Marais, was the book club topic. And I invited a bunch of listeners and Cara and me, and I didn't book anything. We just went up there one morning, and we sat there, and we had a conversation, book club conversation, did a live video, didn't even need to reserve. So there was something like eight or ten of us, no uh, struggles at all to get a place. So I'd recommend you do the same thing if you want to get a really nice view of Paris in the morning. Now, let's continue here. After you've done that in the morning, you're obviously going to be thinking, well, I need a little bit of culture in my life. And what I would suggest for you, if that's the case, the obvious thing would be to go to the top of the Arc de Triomphe, uh, which, as far as I'm concerned, is a bit too packed. The other obvious choice is go to the top of the Notre Dame Cathedral, which we all know is out of action for a while, unfortunately. And the other option is to go to the top of the Eiffel Tower, but you will be swamped by a million people. But what you maybe haven't thought about doing is climbing the Tour Saint-Jacques, which is down in the Marais. And I went up there the other day with uh, YouTube superstar Jay Swanson. He was doing one of his, uh, well, one of his daily videos showing the city, and I'm going to link to this below as well. But uh, they opened this beautiful old tower. It's kind of the last remaining old, old tower in the center of the city. And they open it on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they're doing that until November. And you have to book ahead of time. I think it costs about 10, 12 euros. 
And then you go and meet them and they'll take you in a small group all the way to the top and you get these unbelievable unparalleled views. And I say unparalleled because you're right in the middle of the city looking all the way around. You get the river, you get, uh, uh, I mean, you get Notre Dame, you get the whole of the Marais. It's really, really, really nice. So consider checking that one out. The only downside of it is the tour was in French. They said to us when they heard us speaking English that they could uh, translate bits for us if we wanted. But if you're going there to learn, you might struggle. Also, if you're going there and you're not extremely able-bodied, you will struggle because it's just stairs all the way up. And uh, it's, well, it's not for the faint of heart. Neither is the view. No big railings at the top like you might be used to in, uh, I don't know, like at the Eiffel Tower or anywhere else around the world. And I assume that would probably change pretty quickly. But uh, check that one out too. So Tour Saint-Jacques. So there you go. Two rooftop terraces to start you off but uh, let's take a little pause to do a little bit of uh, well one of the reasons that I did this rooftop story today is because last week I did a Patreon event for the people who are supporting this show on Patreon I had rooftop tea making at the BHV department store if you've never been to uh, well it's very unlikely that you've been where we went because you can only get in there if you book a tea making course or an apero or something like that now I thought it was quite fun. It was really nice to meet some of you uh, members there and uh, it was nice to make the tea as well. But that place isn't even in my top five for this list. It's really cool, good view, but uh, that's kind of what prompted it. As I got co- I've got talking afterwards about the best rooftop terraces in Paris and I started updating my, uh, well, I've been working on updating my guidebook to Paris a lot uh, in recent weeks and I realized I haven't done anything on the rooftop terraces. So that's what prompted all this. And uh, I thought, what would be the best way to spend a day up on the rooftops, especially when it's so warm in Paris? So from there, we're back in Paris again. We're looking for rooftops. What I'd recommend that you do is something I did for the first time recently is the Perruche, the Perruche restaurant on top of the men's department of the Printemps Gallery, uh, the department store. So I went there for the first time maybe a month ago. It's been really uh, recently renovated and reopened. And it's firstly... If you're in that part of the town, any of those department stores, you know the big department stores, Printemps and Gallery Lafayette, you should always go to the top because the view is stunning. What I usually do is go to the Gallery Lafayette, go to the top. There's just an open space, sort of a viewing platform right behind the Opera House. You can do that. It's free. It's really good. But what I really liked about this restaurant, Perruche, or Perruche with a French accent, is it's a little bit further, it's a little bit further west away from the Gallery Lafayette, meaning the Opera House isn't in your way, and the view is kind of even more unspoilt. Now, uh, it's expensive. If you go there for lunch, if you're, a, if you're just a humble podcaster like me, you might go there and get a starter, or you might share a main with your wife. If uh, you're listening to this and that's not the kind of problem for you, go all out. It looks like a really nice place to get some, uh, some good stuff on the menu there. But uh, you've been warned it's a little pricey. But the, what they've done is they've put all these sort of plants. It's kind of, you feel like you're in some kind of oasis up there. All these plants, uh, the, it's very summery. There's these beautiful tables and chairs sort of sprinkled around on the top. Very attentive waiters, very friendly people. Uh, even the customers were really friendly, to be honest. There was a there was, <laughs> there was an elderly French couple besides Lena, my wife and I, and they heard us speaking English. And uh, the woman... Even though she was speaking French to her husband, she turned over and she said, uh, uh, are you American? And, and we said, oh, well, no, I'm Australian. And she says, uh, God bless you. And then continued. I thought that was really nice. So uh, but even the customers are friendly up there. Worth a look, the perruche, which uh, if you're interested, the word means parakeet or budgie if you're listening in Australia or the UK. So there you go. There's three so far. Uh, now... I figured this is where it kind of gets interesting. We're getting into the... You, you've obviously spent a long sort of wine-soaked lunch up on the Perouche and you're thinking, what do I do now? Now you have a few choices. If you want to get a drink or a meal, uh, there are quite a lot of places, but my favorite that I would send you to... Hang on, what am I doing? I haven't read any emails. I was meant to be splicing this up with some emails. I'm just going to take a little pause and read one from... Uh, well, I'll read one from Ellen Cutler. She says, Hello, Oliver. I'm a loyal listener of the Eiffel Tower and recently became a Patreon member. Thank you, Ellen. People like you keeping the show going. She says, Your witness, your witness, your wit, kindness, and passion for Paris make each episode a delight. And now she explains why she signed up on Patreon. She says, I've been poised to join for a while, but what catapulted me into action... Sounds dangerous... Uh, was wanting to hear your extended book discussion with Anne Ma. 
uh, last week's guest. I'm going to touch back on this, uh, Ellen, and everybody else, this idea of extra episodes in a second. But first, Ellen listed a few of her favorite observations about Paris. I thought I'd share them. So all you guys, uh, wherever you are in the world, thinking about Paris, this can maybe give you a few things to tick off or maybe you've already ticked them off. But here are four things that uh, Ellen particularly likes. Sevres ceramic wall in Square Félix de Ruel. Gosh, that one's a hard one to pronounce. Square Félix de Ruel, adjacent to l'église Saint-Germain-des-Prés. So a ceramic wall. I've not seen that one. No tick for me. The plaque at number 56, Rue Jacob, commemorating the Treaty of Paris, which recognized the independence of the United States. Haven't seen that one. Uh, the view of Place de la Concorde, the Arc de Triomphe, and La Défense through the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel du Louvre. Yes, I've seen that. That's a good one. So when you're down right by the Louvre entrance, there's another sort of arc. Not the Arc de Triomphe, but the other big one down the other end. You can stand there and see the whole city sort of line up like magic. That's a good one. And then fourthly, the man walking through a wall in Montmartre from Marcel Aimé's short novel Le Passe Muraille. Well, I've seen that too. And I think I've told this story on the podcast before, but heck, I'm going to tell it again. I was up there one day uh, giving a tour to some people who listen to this show, which I occasionally do. And I was showing that very statue of the man frozen in time in the wall. And there was a big tour group next to me where the, the guy leading the tour had a microphone and he was sort of speaking quite loudly and uh, it was hard to avoid it. But then he, he just uh, said to his group, and if you all look over to the left, you'll see Oliver G of the Earful Tower podcast, which you should all subscribe to. And I just about fell, well, I just about fell right over. But it was a good, it was a nice little surprise and it made my day quite honestly. But it's true, uh, Marcel Aimé's uh, stuck in the wall there, worth seeing. And then uh, she adds, lastly, now that you're a Montmartre, as in someone who lives in Montmartre, consider a caramelized fruit tart from Les Petits Mitrons at 26 Rue La Pique. And I will do that and report back. Thank you, Ellen. But I want to touch on what you said there in the middle about uh, how you were catapulted into signing up. Uh, thanks for signing up. But everybody else, I'm going to bring back more of those uh, Patreon-only podcast episode bonuses. So when I have a guest in there, uh, in the studio, I'm going to try and convince them to hang around, do more than just the half an hour episode as a bonus and as a way to try and get people to sign up uh, and support the show, quite frankly. But uh, speaking of that, remember this... Uh, the sponsorship I'm doing with Fat Tire comes to an end at the end of this month. And that is just, what are we, it's only five days away. So I'm still, I'm still really torn whether to keep doing two episodes a week or cut back to one again like I always have done. Uh, and your Patreon support, everybody, will be a big factor in helping me decide which of those I go for. But back to what I was talking about today, the terraces. So you get to the evening. You're ready to go out for maybe a meal. You've probably eaten a lot at the, uh, at the Perruche. And you're thinking, hey, look, I just want a little bit of a nice evening snack with maybe a little cocktail, a bit of a different view of the city. What are you going to do? Well, my recommendation is you head to the 11th arrondissement to a quite hidden rooftop bar and probably my favorite of them all. And it's called Le Perchoir. Now, the Perchoir, there are several of them dotted all around the city. This is the one that I've been to the most of all. This is the one I like the most. I used to live near there. I sort of ducked up there every now and again. What I really like about it, firstly, it feels kind of secret. Like you have to walk. I mean, you kind of have to know it's there. There's no sign saying what it is or how to get in. Uh, I'll put the information on the eiffeltower.com just once again but you walk in uh, depending on what time of the day you might not even have like a bounce or anything there you have to walk into what looks like a residential building take a lift or the stairs seven floors up to the very top and then when you i suggest you take the lift actually the elevator if you're not afraid of sort of confined spaces because when it opens up those doors open up and you're hit straight away with a view and you're looking sort of northwards towards Montmartre, but way from away in the 11th hour in this one. The whole city just opens up. You can see the Sacre Coeur in the distance. You turn left, you head towards the bar. It's all open all around you, and it's all rooftops, rooftops. It's so residential and beautiful. And uh, the way that they've laid out the bar is pretty cool too. It's like a lot of low seating, so you can, you know, people sort of sit back and relax. The fences around are made of glass, so you've got this uninterrupted view. Uh, maybe glass, maybe perspex or whatever. But you can go and you can get a sort of snack there. They do like planche, uh, you know, uh, charcuterie and cheese and, and ham and that kind of stuff. 
a uh, little snacky kind of food it'd be perfect for and cocktails and not as expensive as a lot of the other rooftop bars for example the one where you went for your coffee this morning at the terrace hotel those cocktails are probably twice as expensive as at the Pachois. so that is where you want to go and you want to time it for the sunset ideally you go on a day that's uh, you know you don't want to go on a friday or a saturday night because it'll be probably too packed especially if you get there late but if you go there on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, you'll probably have the place half to yourself and it'll be absolutely lovely. And it's not just a place for younger people. This is a, I'd take my own grandma there if she didn't mind getting in the lift to the seventh floor with me and traipsing across to the other side of town to do it. So keep that one on your radar as well. Now, before I get onto my place for the end of the night where you want to go for a bit of discotheque action, I'll read out another quick email here. I've got one from Peter. Peter, who recently signed up on Patreon as well, and I liked his email because he let me know where he listens, and this was a unique one. It says, I usually listen to your podcast while in the car. I'm riding a lot for work, and as Belgium, Belgium, it's got to be the first listener I've heard of in Belgium, uh, as Belgium is prone to traffic jams, your podcast really alleviates the stress of standing bumper to bumper. I have to admit, though, that I've taken the car out in the evenings as well just to leisurely cruise and listen to your podcast. He adds, uh, I like the fact you're going all out, as in on all the different channels. There's the vlogs, the podcast, the website. I visit Paris several times a year. I often find things in your work that I either recognize or that make me want to explore on my next visit. Looking forward to your next episode from Peter. Peter, you're in the next episode. Thank you for your support on Patreon. And I love the idea of you just leisurely cruising around Belgium with the Eiffel Tower playing. That is very touching to me. Thanks for the email. But you did forget a question, so I've got nothing to answer, which means we get on to the last rooftop terrace for the night. Now, there's a few here, but I'll give you a bit of a heads up. If you are... Well, look, if you're the kind of person that prefers to go to the Hemingway Bar at the Ritz for a cocktail, if that's your idea of a drink in the city, you're probably not going to like this place. This one's for the younger crowd. Uh, I went to... <laughs> fairly recently, I found myself... On the other side of town, down by the Gare de Lostalitz in the 13th arrondissement. And there's a bunch of boats, big old boats that are lined up all along the river. And several of these have rooftop terraces that turn into kind of, you know, pumping nightclubs. One of them that I went to recently, it was just the Café Oz, which, if you've never heard about it, is sort of, I don't know, there's maybe five of them around the city. They're, they're decked out in Australian uh, paraphernalia, you know, like big old taxidermy crocodiles in fact they're probably not even taxidermy they're just sort of models of crocodiles and flags and you know the kind of drinks that you get in australia but this uh rooftop terrace was really cool because you go out on a boat you go to the top there were loads of people there i was there on a saturday night i think and uh i think if you're if you I suppose if you're a backpacker or if you're a little bit younger it'd be the perfect place to go and watch the sunset have a drink and drink late into the night uh, it's it's not very Parisian at all. There were maybe two or three next to them. It's more like sort of international nightclub-y. But if you want some fresh air and you want to be out partying on the river, I'd encourage you to check it out because it was pretty cool. And uh, if you're an Australian listening, you'll be happy to hear that they sell VB beers, which I drank and uh, gave one to Lena for the first time in her life. And, uh, well, I like to think that she enjoyed it as well. So there you go. There's the... <laughs> there's the guide to how you'd spend a whole day. I don't know if it's possible or if anyone would ever dare to go to all of those things in one day. But if you do, you win a prize, send me an email. That would be fantastic to know that someone's done that. But uh, in short, there are a lot of really good rooftop bars, terraces, restaurants around the city. They're just the ones that I've been to the most, the ones that I recommend. But to be honest, you can't really go wrong. Just be prepared for uh, if you go in sort of peak times, be prepared for waiting times for for crowds, for queues, and for expensive menus. But if you play it smart, if you follow those kind of guidelines that I gave you, you'd probably be all right. Now, I'm going to wind it up for that episode. I'm just here by myself. I got nothing to promote, nothing to plug, uh, I suppose, except for Patreon sponsorship. So if you're enjoying this show, if you've been telling yourself that you've been wanting to sign up on Patreon for a while, if you're driving around somewhere now and you're thinking, heck, it's about time I did it, then guess what? Now's the perfect time. This show's going to lose a big sponsor uh, next week, which uh, is going to make it a little bit trickier for me. I'd love it if you guys signed up on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash the Earful Tower. Your membership means a great deal to me, so please consider it. 
But that's it for me from now. Hang around after this little bit of music from Slim and the Beast for a word from French today. Let's get into that. So there you have it, rooftop terraces in Paris. I hope you guys enjoy at least one of them. Feel free to send me a picture if you take a nice view from the top. Love a good picture of Paris. Might just share it on my Instagram account. That's, uh, in fact, you guys who are tagging me on Instagram, keep doing it and I'll keep sharing them. But uh, what I figured I'd do is I'd jump over to French Today to finish this one off. They're the sponsor of the show. They're the sponsor of the Monday episodes. Uh, French Today, you maybe heard the episode on Monday last week with Olivier. Usually it's Camille, she's lost her voice, still lost her voice. Terrible, terrible. Uh, But Olivier uh, jumped in. Hopefully we'll get Camille back for next month. Otherwise, you know, Olivier would do the trick, I suppose. But uh, I want to answer sort of a conundrum that I think some people might have in Paris and France. I certainly have had it before, and I've jumped back to the very beginning of the French Today audiobooks. If you're new around here, that's what I do on Monday. I end the episodes by talking a little bit about the French Today audiobooks, uh, keeping in mind that you can do the same as I can and read these books, frenchtoday.com slash earful8 for 10% off. But uh, way back at the start of Amois Paris Level 1, which is uh, your sort of introduction to the French language here, there's a chapter on whether or not you should use the first name of people when you're speaking to them in France. It's a good question, especially if, uh, for example, you move into a building or you're staying in a building in the Airbnb, you know that the uh, the guardian or the sort of caretaker has a name, you know their first name, you know their last name, it's right there on the letterbox. What do you call them? Do you ever use that first name? Well, let me give you the official word from Camille at French today. She says, if you're talking to a friend... Now, this official word from her isn't just about the guardian, mind you. She says, if you're talking to a friend, you'd usually use their first name, and the same goes for a child. So when you greet them, you say, bonjour Mary... Salut Anne, bonsoir Thomas or Thomas. Uh, With other people, you'd use typically Monsieur uh, for a man, which is shortened to just M dot. So if you ever see M dot uh, G, it means Monsieur G. For other people, you'd also use two other things. Madame, uh, shortened is MME, which was weird. I remember when I first saw that, MME. I was like, what the heck is going on there? But MME is short for Madame, uh, and that's for a woman, of course. And number three, the third one you can use is Mademoiselle. Don't forget that middle E is silent. It's not mademoiselle, it's mademoiselle. And that is shortened to M-L-L-E. M-L-L-E. And that's for a younger woman. There's a whole uh, sub-story there. I I think I've talked about Camille on that subject before. How some young people, some young women don't like being called mademoiselle anymore. They think, uh, hey, why do we need a name to show we're not married when... uh, when young men don't need a different name, but that's a whole different topic. Mademoiselle will usually get you by, especially if you're learning French. But Camille adds in this here, if you know the last name of, your, of the person you're speaking to, uh, using it is considered to be more polite. So you can either be bonjour monsieur, totally acceptable, but more polite, bonjour monsieur Dupont. Bonjour madame, bonjour madame Dupont. Bonjour mademoiselle, bonjour mademoiselle Dupont. So... That was just uh, literally from one of the first chapters, the study guides of Amois Paris Level 1. This is what you'd get if you're just starting to learn French. That one there, there's examples of things like, you know, what's a, you know, all the grammar stuff. What's an agreement, verb, noun, what's the gender about, the tenses, the present tense, gliding, liaison, all that stuff, as well as hello, goodbye, uh, and beyond. So if you want to get your teeth into learning French, consider frenchtoday.com slash earful8. All the audiobooks are further 10% off. They're currently having a 20% sale still, so that means you'd get 30% off if you booked it today. But uh, do it. Improve your French so that when you come to Paris and go to a rooftop terrace, you'll be able to order in French and you'll be able to give a little wink up into the air towards Camille as a thank you for uh, getting you to that level. So uh, that's it for me. You've been listening to the Eiffel Tower. Do that sign up on Patreon. Now's the time, everybody. Otherwise, check out French today and uh, enjoy dreaming of Paris wherever you are in the world. Thanks for today. Merci, au revoir.